Hello everyone and welcome to another news coolum video, another plug side chat. Uh, in this video, again, I, I'm going to do something that's just sort of off the cuff and, and kind of responding to one of the uh, one of our viewers here, um, one of our subscribers. But uh, there there seems to be some misunderstanding about I think the Boldy Bee's charge rate and what's actually dictating the, the charge rate or the charge limits. And I think there are a couple of factors that are being completely overlooked. And there are some things that I think are misunderstood. So, you know, as much as, you know, J.B. Straubel and Elon Musk have done for electric vehicles, I, I think they've shared some... I don't want to call it misinformation, but I, I think some misunderstood or misleading information, right? Especially in regards to the battery packs that are being used by non-Tesla vehicles. Now, remember, they have a huge stake in, in basically stating that their technology is the best. After all, they are selling electric vehicles. So they're going to say that the battery packs being used by non-Teslas are inferior, right? Uh, whether it's the cylindrical cell versus pouch cell battery packs or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's going to be an implied, our packs are better than their packs, right? For whatever reason. And they threw around terms like, you know, power density versus, you know, energy density. And the thing is though, and, and they're, they're talking about this in, in relation to charging rates and it's really not that at all so so the bolt ev has a few things that are preventing it from charging at a faster rate uh, and, and the first and foremost is gm is just a more conservative company uh, this is their first no compromise electric vehicle that they've released widely to the public and they were very conservative with their battery charging rates because they knew that higher charging rates would lead to premature battery fade, as they refer to it. Uh, they also stated that part of the reason they, they set the charging rates the way they did is based on the current public charging infrastructure and how it was implemented. You know, knowing full well that most of the chargers that are available were only 125 amp uh, 50 kilowatt chargers. So even if they ramped the charging rate up way up, it wouldn't matter, it wouldn't change, or it wouldn't really affect the charging rate too much in terms of you know what you'd actually see in real world charging. With the Bolt EV, right now you have, as far as we know, a 150 amp limit up to 55%, then it throttles down to 100 amp uh, from 55% to 65%, and from there it throttles down to, I believe it's about 64 amps. When you throttle down, the voltage is staying the same, but the kilowatts are a result of the multiplying the, the voltage times the amperage. And so what you end up it with is a reduced charging rate. It doesn't really matter about the battery chemistry or anything else. What really just matters is what's the voltage of the pack uh, and how many amps are you able to push into it uh, at, at any given time. And a uh, recent you know, drive the Ampera E versus the Ionic EV. Tesla Bjorn was showing that, oh, okay, the Ionic EV is charging at like a 45 uh, to 46 kilowatt um, average charge rate up to 77%. Well, that's because it's going higher up into the state of charge. And as it does, consequently, the voltage increases. Now, because Hyundai decided to not taper off the amperage until 77%, you're getting a much higher charge rate. Well, GM, they did. So what happens is the voltages are actually very similar between the packs. At most, the nominal voltage between the packs is maybe 10 volts. So a, an Ionic at 50 to 55% battery uh, at the same amperage is only going to be charging at best maybe a a few tenths of a kilowatt faster than the Bolt EV because the voltages are similar, the amperage is similar. Now at 55%, that's when the Bolt EV uh, uh, tapers off and the Ionic EVs uh, 
average charge rate increases from there. So, so it, but again, it, it's not energy density, power density, or anything of that nature. It's, it's more of an arbitrary um, decision to govern the charge rate. But on top of that, there is something that's really dictating both the ionic EV and the Volt EV's charge rates, and that's the CCS uh, standard. So both of them are equipped with CCS level two. Level two has a limit of 200 amps. The level three CCS has a limit of 400 amps, which is why certain vehicles are going to be able to charge at much higher kilowatt rates. We're talking 200, 300 kilowatts, 400 kilowatts when you uh, add in higher pack voltages, right? So that's the other thing that's dictating how fast the Volt EV can charge. So because you're limited to 200 amps per plug, it really doesn't matter. There, there's going to be the, high, the highest end you're going to charge. And that's why I think the, the GM engineers in the manual refer to an 80 kilowatt charger. It's because it's 200 amps at 400 volts. That's really the, that, that charger would supply all the power the Volt EV uh, could possibly take given the parameters and the, the limitations of CCS level two, which again is the same for something like the Ionic EV. So, so that's really what's dictating uh, the Bolt EV's charge rate uh, is, is where, they, where GM has set the taper, the amperage limitations of a CCS level two charger. And well, of course, the other aspect of that is, is the charge, um, the charging network itself is, is also limiting it but, uh, but yeah, it, it's not really the battery pack. So if the Bolt EV were equipped with CCS level three, in theory, yeah, it could charge as fast as the Tesla behind us. It could charge at a 350 amp rate. Now, how, what that would do to the battery and how long it s sustain that charge rate, well, that would depend. Uh, but given how conservative GM is, they would never really push it that hard. And I don't know that it would need to be pushed that hard, uh, at least not for now. But yeah, I don't, I, I think there's some misunderstanding in terms of, you know, oh, well, because a battery that's half the size is charging at a similar rate as the Bolt EV on 125 amp charging, that somehow it has something to do with the battery construction and the battery in the Bolt EV is inferior. If you, you know, ran a couple of Spark EV batteries in parallel, they'd be able to charge faster than the Bolt EV battery. Uh, actually, not really, unless you equip them with something faster than the CCS level two standard, right? Because they'd again be limited to the 200 amp. So at that point, it's the voltage. And again, in the Spark EV, perfect example, it isn't throttled up until you know a higher state of charge in the battery so it's charging at a higher voltage that's why it sees 48 kilowatts it's not because the battery is capable of taking more it's because that's what the cutoff was set at so yeah i think i think it's important to understand that there are other factors going on than battery limitations and in, in the case of hardware it's the adapter uh, and the CCS level two standard. It's also, um, in the case of the Volt EV, a matter of conservative battery management and uh, limitation based on the engineers and the programming. So anyway, um, yeah, I just thought I would put that out there because I, I feel like I said, I feel like there's a lot of confusion uh, about why the Bolt EV's charging rate is what it is and why smaller battery vehicles seemingly charge faster when really what it is is it's the the voltage differences because uh, they're all operating on very similar nominal voltages the i-pace is sort of the exception to that instead of a 350 uh, volt nominal it has closer to a 400 volt nominal so it will charge significantly faster like 12 to 15 percent faster than most of the other um, evs out today um, on the same chargers at the same amperage. There are reasons for it, and it doesn't have to do necessarily with the limitations of the battery itself. So um, anyway, uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. I, I know I'll probably get some pushback, but um, I, I think it's important to clarify that, uh, yeah, things aren't 
the reasons for the charge rate might not be what they appear or what certain people believe them to be. Uh, but anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. But uh, but yeah, I, I'd love I'd love to hear you guys, you know, chime in with what you think or what your experiences are. But uh, but yeah, like I said, it, it it's not the battery that's limiting the charge rate. So as always, thank you for watching.